This is a 3 watt 808 nanometer laser driver. Uh, I believe it takes 9 to 12 volts DC. This is a standard 12 volt DC GPU fan. This is heat sink for computer paste. I am going to stick this on to here. I'm going to use this little tab here to pop into this hole. Notice this is where your uh, your chip is for, that produces most of the heat on this board. You want this chip directly in conjunction with the heat sink so you can pull the heat off. So, okay, you're going to want to smush it together really good until you see that paste ooze out the side a little bit. Get some 90 second epoxy, mix it up part A and B, and dab it right there to make this thing seat well against it. I uh, soldered some leads to it. They're not polarity specific, and I use a little hot glue to insulate the connection so there's no chance of anything shorting them out. Okay, uh, I'll make some stuff clear here. Fan's now on. And uh, I ran that wire to the fan through here. Now, I am going to solder these wires to positive negative on this board where I will be powering it from the power supply. Now, it says GND, TTL, and VCC. Ground is the black, which is this one here, as you can see. It shows ground top, ground. TTL is for computer switching on and off. You don't need that one. VCC, that's your positive. So negative here, positive here. You want the black wire from your fan to go here, and you want the red wire from your fan to go here. I'm gonna solder them just down here at the base so they're out of the way, and uh, then I'll be able to solder my connections in over here for later when the power supply comes in. Soldering tip. If you're gonna solder anything to anything else, like this is gonna get soldered to here, put solder on your wires first. Okay, fan power, soldered in. Now this wire here, one is goldish and one is silverish. Copper, the goldish one is always positive. I always use it for positive and I always use the, the silverish wire for negative. That goes for everything. Some wire that you buy has a white stripe on it. I always use the white strop, stripe for positive. Uh, be consistent, otherwise if you wire anything backwards on this thing, you will fry it. So. Just be mindful of what positive and negative are. A uh, good idea is just buy black and red wire, and that'll make it easier for you, too. So, anyways, I'm going to cover this with hot glue just to keep it insulated. Uh, later, I will be soldering the laser diode leads here. We'll get to that later. Okay, this laser head is already built. The components are basically one of these heat sinks. This purchased at Lowe's. I think it's a half inch or three quarter coupler. It fits beautifully on the front of a TO3 case. And um, basically, some machine screws you can get and a heat sink. So you take your heat sink and you smear it all over this. And then you smush it to the back of that and then you bolt it together make sure there'll be some squishing out the side you wiped out away and then you get some <clears throat> epoxy and you basically epoxy this to the front of the to3 diode and uh, it should look like this and if you don't have one of these wonderful static discharge bracelets i highly recommend you get one so you don't have any Discharge on your dial when you're working on them and when you're touching them now Another thing that was uh, a problem for me is originally I didn't know where positive and negative was on the diode this outside case Is always positive Negative is the one that's isolated 
So the one that's actually the outside case is positive and negative is the one that's insulated from the outside case. So be very mindful of positive and negative or you will cook this thing and you'll be out 100 bucks, 80 bucks, whatever they run now, whatever you get at auction. Okay, here we go. Okay, the trick here is to solder quickly without transferring too much heat to the diode. So I got the soldering gun real hot. Remember, keep your tip clean on that thing at all times. Um, did a little tray of that resin stuff to kind of keep it clean and then wipe it off. Real important. Okay, I put a little, quickly put a dab of solder on both of these on the diode. And I blew on it real quickly to get it cold. And then I put a dab of, I, I saturated the wire with solder here. And uh, basically, you're going to touch it to it with a soldering gun, super hot. And then you just can touch it for a second or two and get them to melt together. All right, hold it in place and blow on it to cool it off as quickly as you can to minimize any heat transferring down. Okay, because you don't want that diode to get too hot. Keep it as cold as possible. Blew it to protect the connections and give it some strength and support so the bending doesn't go on to the wire connections but into the hot glue will take the brunt of any bending. Keep it covered in cellophane while I work on the laser and stuff to keep dust out of here. You want to keep it as clean as possible. Okay, now we're going to be soldering the actual laser diode to the board. Here's the laser diode. When I soldered a minute ago. Here's the wire lead. Again, positive and negative. Positive is the white stripe on this one. Negative. Um, I will be putting a gob of solder and saturating both of these with solder. And here are the connection points. Here and here. Follow that little line up. Every circuit board has some sort of a layout to tell you what's up. Laser negative and positive is pretty explanatory. Negative is clearly this one here and positive is that one there. Um, one thing, very important, if you were playing around or for any reason powered up this board without the laser diode hooked to it, make sure that you short these two across, double check with your meter, look Make sure there's no voltage stored on this board whatsoever, okay? You should not ever power this board up without the laser diode hooked to it, okay? Because if you do, you'll smoke it. So basically, I'm going to solder laser diode to here. Um, notice I have nice short little cuts here just so the insulation is nice and close in. And um, here we go. The laser diode is now soldered into place. I'm going to add hot glue here, but I'm also going to extend that hot glue out some and kind of pack it around here. So if this thing bends and wiggles at all, that kind of energy will get put into the hot glue instead of using the solder joints. It just saves it over time. This is called a momentary push switch. It is a button that you must push to activate and let go to deactivate. Now they come two ways. When you buy them they could be normally closed momentary which means it's shorted out without you pushing it and that's not what you want you want the momentary switch normally open which means no electricity can flow through these two wires until you push the button and then electricity can flow through so you want normally open momentary push switch all right, and basically you can buy them and you can get clips for it for your wires. I'm just gonna put some solder here and I'm gonna solder two wires to here and then I'm going to hot glue it, insulate it, and I'm gonna take some heat shrink around the outside to insulate it and make it look good. And uh, basically that will be your trigger switch. Again, remember, this is a plastic switch. <clears throat> and uh, you don't want heat on it for too long get your gun hot stick your solder on it and get a little bit of solder bead on it and pull it away and blow on it you don't want to melt the plastic also switch is not polarity specific you can put the positive or negative on that wire the, the white stripe on either side it doesn't matter electricity flows in one wire and out the other so it doesn't matter uh, very important get yourself a real soldering gun 
uh, 1.2 amps at least you want to get it hot real hot quick and fast and take care of your solder joints anyway this is soldered on here I always test the switch when I'm done <clears throat> with a meter put it on continuity um, touch the meter to the two wires and then push the button and then you'll hear this sound whoops when if the switch works if you hear this that means the switch is shorted or you got the wrong switch and you have a normally closed switch or a bad switch you don't want to have any connection until you push the button then you should have a connection like that for the wiring power supply 12 volt 6 amps there's everybody right there the negative wire goes directly to the driver board okay no brakes no nothing just wire it to the driver board negative now the positive wire it goes out from the power supply into the key switch out the key switch into the wire for the trigger or the button out the button and then to the positive so if the key switch is off there's a break in the wire and you can push the button nothing's gonna happen um, if the key switch is on then you push the button and then electricity can flow all the way through and turn it on do not put a switch or break the connection between the diode and the board if that wire gets cut for any reason you have to drain the board again and short those across before you reconnect it otherwise you'll dump voltage on here and fry it so that's the layout I'm running these wires through here I'm gonna connect them in that form and then put the key switch in here and then uh, fill that with hot glue and then the power lead will come out and I'll be able to plug it into the power supply but the wiring inside of here is essentially this I have a piece of pipe here I ran all the wires through uh, the negative connects directly to the board and the positive is series through the key switch and the button switch and then connects to the positive as this diagram shows I'm gonna put some uh, heat shrink on all these and I'm going to stick it all together and have the key switch sit here at the end and then you'll see the finished housing okay heat shrink is on okay I shoved all that in there and uh, glued that in after I test the laser I'll fill that up with hot glue too okay this is uh, the positive negative to power the laser on the board and everything got one of these I uh, plugged it in and tested it and I verified that that is positive and that is negative always double check your polarities before you hook anything up again it's uh, I think it's a 6 amp 12 volt DC power supply this basically is right here and then the power supply for the thing plugs right into that it's just easier you can solder it directly or uh, use one of these it's up to you all right we're ready to test fire it without the lens assembly just to see if it works so I'm gonna plug this into here I'm gonna put the key in and I'm gonna find the button wherever it went here it is here's the button do not point this at your face people um, point it down you should see a pink light you see that pink light get in here close to do you see that pink light okay so you know it works and you can uh, shut the key switch off test it and see if the lights off make sure your key switch works now that you verified the laser works uh, key switch off unplug your power and then rewrap your head to the laser and then we'll build the lens assembly next also verify when you press the little red button the Jeep the the fan works this one has pretty lights on it yay assembly 25 millimeter half inch PVC 25 millimeters long 
Okay, with well the Dremel, I notched it out and I made a little hole here where this lens is going to sit in there. And uh, I use this as a practice gauge. So it's the same piece as that one. I'm just using it so I don't have to mess with the laser while I'm checking sizes and stuff. Anyways, it goes in there. And it uh, fits in there nicely. 18 millimeter lens. We get glued in face down on this one into that little notch I've made. Another identical lens will be glued to the other side on the flat face there. This is just the piece that's holding it right now. With the, that piece in the center is what we're working on. Um, here's the base of the lens assembly. The lens assembly in here, I am going to test fire it with the lens and see how my focal point is. Here's the first test fire of it. Well, hit the button. Now you see how wide that is right there? If I come in real close, now you see it's doing its thing here. Okay, so it works fine. Now we got to adjust the focal length in the, the guide. Okay, off. Please drill a hole in it and inserted this metal rod. And we're going to figure out the best focal length here. It's going to go on the front of that and front of the lens. What I want to do now is find the tightest focal point for this thing. All right, and what I'm going to do by getting the tightest point, I'm going to mark it with that pen. Hit it. Okay, hit it again, hit it again, hit it again, all right, right there, Ooh. okay, leave it off, I'm going to mark it right there with that pen, and then uh, you'll see what I do with the mark. The mark I made earlier, I uh, basically cut the rod, shaped the tip a little bit, bent it at the mark, so now the focal point is set and uh, I'm gonna try to do this with the trigger at the same side but focal point is now set and uh, you can see it blows right through that black ink Woo. all right that's how you build it thank you I'm gonna start selling kits to build these things uh, you can get a hold of me at g-i-b-s-o-n-a-t-t-i-l-a -T -T at yahoo.com and uh thanks for watching my video